Tonight we will be able to we will look we will be looking in the scriptures to find out what is the deception. In the last few months I have been thinking and praying and studying about this topic of um, deception, what deception looks like, especially in the last days, because the scripture tells us that deception will be in the last days. And uh, what is the deception? Well, today we'll, we'll be answering some questions, not all, not all the questions, but some questions in regards to this topic. So let me pray first and then we'll dive into the topic. Father, we know that we are nothing without your wisdom. We, we understand nothing. If the Holy Spirit does not enlighten our minds, we cannot understand anything. So we give you praise and honor and glory for the wisdom that you have bestowed upon us through the scriptures by the Holy Spirit and that in the truth we can find the standard for the truth and we can we can know for sure whether we are deceived or not and I pray Father that you will open our eyes and everyone here on this in this room will understand and will will leave this place with a better understanding of what the truth is and what deception looks like and we will have the wisdom to make the discernment and the distinct the, the distinction between it and choose to follow the truth and uh, follow the example of Messiah as he obeyed the word, as he obeyed the Torah, let us obey as he did. In, in his name we pray and everyone will read say Amen. 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 So um, the, the reason I have been thinking about this topic is um, because Yahushua himself uh, when he was asked about the last days and the return of Messiah by his disciples, he himself said, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. I would like for you to underline this and remember this expression because later on we will see that John says the same thing, uses the same expression, Let no man deceive you. And I believe they were referring to the same deception. Um, and I would like to prove with the scripture that that's the case. For many will come in my name, saying, I am Messiah. Which actually means they will say that Messiah is Messiah. They won't say that they themselves are Messiah. The, the meaning of this verse is that they will say and acknowledge that Messiah is Messiah. And will deceive many. Many will come to deceive many, and they will acknowledge that Yahushua is the Messiah. And in verse 20, 24 he says, for false messiahs, this is a different, a, a, a different thing, false messiahs and false prophets, two different categories of people. Mm -hmm. the, the false messiahs are those who proclaim and claim to be Messiah, but a, a false messiah will never come in the Messiah's name. But can you see at the beginning it says many will come in my name, in the Messiah's name. So if, if they will come in Messiah's name, they can't say they are Messiah. Because people will say, well, you make up your mind. You want to come in his name where you are his, him. Okay? So, but the false prophets will come and many other people apart from the false prophets. And I suggest there are many church leaders uh, in, in these days to come in his name and acknowledge Yahushua as they call him, they call him Jesus. They acknowledge that he is the Christ, he is the Messiah and deceive many. And he says, these messiahs, false messiahs and false prophets will arise and show great signs. Okay? And, and we, we, uh, we witness these, these days some people who pretend to make great signs and wonders so much so that if it were possible they would deceive even the elect and I would like to suggest to you that in the months and the years to come these people false messiahs and false prophets will arise and they will perform many other miracles and wonders 
And uh, uh, we would say, wow, this is, this is amazing. And people would wonder to, to them and, uh, at them, and, uh, and many would be deceived. And I would like for you to see here in this passage that even the elect are target to this. Okay? Even the elect. And the elect, you have to acknowledge, the elect are only a few. Because Masham said, only few go on the narrow path. And only a few find, find it, find the narrow path and enters the narrow path. And they are the elect. So, if, uh, the, the Messiah says that if it were possible, if it were possible, so even the elect would sort of um, be tempted to, to be deceived. Now, this in itself, the fact that Messiah warned us and he left us these words, and we have these words recorded in the, in the Gospel, this in itself is enough reason for us to ask ourselves, what is the deception? How can we make sure that we are not deceived? And I would like to submit to you and I would like to share with you the fact that I myself was deceived. Those who do not know me, I grew up in Romania. I was born in Romania in 1969. I grew up under the, the communist regime for 20 years. Uh, when I was 20, we had the revolution in Romania in, in, uh, in December. Uh, 1989 and um, uh, during this time of under the communist regime I grew up as a Christian as a believer uh, my family uh, and, and I attended a Baptist church and uh, the church that we were part of especially uh, since my, uh, my teenagehood it was an underground church okay uh, which means it was a church that was not permitted, did not have legal permission by the government to function as a, as a church, as a um, community of believers. So um, we, in that regard, we were, the church was a, an underground church. For me, faith was a very serious matter. It was a matter of life and death, always. I grew up with the mentality that if I have to die for what I believe, I wouldn't have a second thought about it. I would put my life on the line because I believe that what I was taught was the truth. I would die for what is the truth. Okay? Two years ago when, when I uh, started to do some research, further research into the scriptures, prompted by some questions, some people asked me a few questions and, and I had the desire to find out how much of the things that I believed and I received through the theological training uh, was true. How much was true and how much was tradition, how much was man-made, okay? How much was Bible, was scripture, was the commandments of Elohim and how much was man-made? And I was so um, disappointed to find out that a lot of things that I believed and I practiced as a believer was not true, was man-made tradition and man-made religious laws. Uh, so I, I gave up Christmas and Easter. I gave up this year, uh, well, last year, because we are in 2014 now. I gave up Sunday worship at all. Uh, and I, I believe that if I am to worship Him with my brothers and sisters, I am to worship Him according to His uh, instructions. Uh, he, he did. I believe he did not give us the freedom to choose what what way we worship him. He gave us instructions, clear instructions, and we either obey him or we disobey him, and that's our choice. And once we choose something, we are accountable to him, and we will um, uh, suffer the consequences. So the reason I'm, I'm I'm sharing with you this is because I would like to uh, confess to you that I was a deceived pastor. For 20 years as a, uh, as a Baptist minister, I ministered 8 years in Romania, 12 years in Australia, and some things that I uh, preach, I'm so ashamed of these days. I would go any time to uh, tell people the truth if they would accept me, if they, if they would 
allow me to, to, to share with them. Uh, but I would like to uh, sh to tell you that they won't they won't allow me to to share what I believe is the truth. And uh, I confess that I was deceived. But at that time they didn't consider me deceived. But now they consider that I am deceived. And I know that I was deceived. And I would like to submit to you today, and I will show with the scripture why. Because obviously, if I was deceived for 42 years, why should I expect that today uh, I'm not deceived? So the very reason, a biblical reason, I believe I'm not deceived today, I will show you through the scriptures. So you will find out, and you can know for yourself whether you are deceived or not. I believe the reason answer through the scripture what is the deception and and what it means to be deceived and we can know we can know some people say well we can't other people say no we, we, we know that we're not deceived and we know we're not deceived because everyone else believes like us and I used to believe like that and, and I'm saying no 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 so today I believe you will uh, uh, my hope and my prayer is that you will get some answers um, to this question of what is the deception. So what it what it is, uh, I put from the from uh, from the website a couple of uh, definitions. The act of making someone believe something that is not true. The act of deceiving someone. That's the, the, the deception. An act or a statement intended to make people believe something that is not true. Um, a lie believed to be true. I like this one, it's simple. A lie believed to be true. Um, deception is the hiding or distorting of the truth. Now this is not my definition. This is a definition you find in, in your, uh, on the website, on a secular website. This is not like a, a any faith-based uh, definition. Deception, uh, bequilment, deceit, bluff, and mystification are acts of propagate beliefs that are not true or not the whole truth, as in half-truths or omissions. This, I mean, how, how clear is that? The moment I read this definition, I said, wow, this is it. Because a lie or a deceit is not only a full lie. A deceit could be half true or could contain half true or a truth that is distorted and made to say something that is actually uh, it doesn't say. So, in the whole process, what we have here would be uh, we have the deceivers. We have the deception, obviously, and we have the deceived. And and I, I have been thinking about this, and I would like to suggest to you that there are two types of deceivers. There are deceivers who know the truth, and are, there are deceivers who do not know the truth. Those who know the truth, they are intentional deceivers, which means they deceive with intention. Those who do not know the truth, but they believe the lie that was told, that they, they were told, and believe it is true. If they pass it on to others, they become deceivers, obviously. Okay? So if I believe, if you tell me a lie and I believe it's a true, it's it's true, and uh, it's true, and, and then you tell me it's true and I believe you, and I pass it on to others, you deceived me. You know it's a lie, but you, you deceive me intentionally. But if I believe it, and I believe it's true, and I pass it on to others, I become a deceiver, and an unintentional one. Are you with me? Yeah. Okay? And to be deceived implies that you don't know the truth. You don't know the truth. Uh, well, and, and this applies to those who uh, are intentional deceivers, unintentional deceivers. Those who do not know the truth. Because if you know the truth, and you you cannot be deceived, okay? You can only be deceived if you 
do not know what the truth is, you believe that a lie is the truth. Okay? Then you are deceived. The moment you know the truth, and I would like to warn you today, you will find out the truth today from the scriptures, not from me. Okay? You, and you have to make up your own minds. And if you did not know the truth, if you were deceived, and today you find out the truth, then you will, you can't be deceived anymore. You, you will have the option to do something about your deception, your, your past deception, or you can stay and believe a lie to be true. To be true. And uh, that's your option. Okay? So, we definitely know who is the father of deception or the father, father of lies because Messiah himself said about the people, he was a mother from the beginning and he does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character for he is a liar and the father of lies. Okay? That the devil is not an unintentional deceiver. He is an intentional deceiver. He knows the truth, but he, uh, he prefers to believe the lie and to promulgate it, to send it, to, to give it to others. Uh, he is the father of lies. But those who proclaim the truth, or they pretend to proclaim the truth those who are deceived today who do not know the truth they just pass on a lie they believe it's the truth okay and the, the proof for that is this passage in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12 and 13 and the passage that in this in this scripture is the background of this passage uh, and the context of this passage is uh, Paul is writing to Timothy about the last days and in the last days he says at some point that indeed all those who desire to live a godly life in Messiah Yeshua will be persecuted while evil people and imposters will go from bad to worse deceiving and being deceived and the meaning here is them themselves being deceived. Which means that they, they do not know they are deceived. They do not know that the, the, the things they preach, the things they pass on are lies. They believe what they pass on is truth. And because of that, they become unintentional deceivers. See, I think this is an important information for, for us because for many years I myself believed that the, the deceivers always know they are deceived and they intentionally deceive. Now, and I tell you, I couldn't accept that my pastors, my teachers in the theological uh, training were uh, deceivers with the intention to deceive. I couldn't because I saw they were sincere, they were very sincere. I was very sincere myself. How could I say that I am a deceiver? I could not have said that because I, I knew, I, I said I am very sincere. The fact that someone is sincere and sincerely believes a lie to be true, it doesn't make him, it doesn't make him not a deceiver. He is still a deceiver, an unintentional one, a very sincere and intentional deceiver. And that is an important information. So what Paul is saying in this passage, and for us to understand that in the last days, you can either uh, decide to be part of the godly, in the group of the godly, or you can be in the group of the ungodly, which Paul uh, calls them evil people and imposters. I mean, evil people sounds really bad. But if you say people are ungodly, it's not as bad, eh? So, so that's why I, I prefer to put ungodly and ungodly. But, but Paul is very uh, uh, black and white and says these ungodly people are evil people 
And I want to submit to you that I was an evil per person. I was an evil uh, a person myself, although I was sincere. And I was an imposter, according to this scripture. According to Paul, I was myself an imposter and an evil person. Why? Because I was deceived. And I, and I deceived others. And that is to be ungodly. So we have the choice to be godly and the, the, uh, the experience for the ungodly, he says, they will be persecuted. So you have a choice to be godly and persecuted or ungodly and become deceived and being deceived. And, and be, be a deceiver as well. Okay? That, pardon me? Being an evil person. Being an evil person uh, described by the scriptures. And, and I would like to submit to you, and if you read the scripture in, in, uh, sec, in Second Timothy, you will realize he's not talking about the people outside the, 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 the body of, of Messiah. He's talking about those who pretend to be believers, those who are amongst these people. And all the description, he says, people in the last day will be this and this and this and this and this. It's a description of those who call themselves to be believers. Those who believe there is a, an Elohim, a God. And to me, that's, that's uh, uh, it's a very important, uh, it's, <coughs> to me, it's very shocking. It's shocking because we, we, we may say, no, no, in churches we, we, we won't find evil people and imposters. In reality, that's what Paul says. If, if, if I believe Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit to write to Timothy these words. And you remember, this is 2,000 years ago. And he was talking about the last days. And, and we are in the last days. So if they were in the last day, how much more we are in the last days? And we find this. Also, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, 11, he says, Therefore Elohim sends them a strong delusion, so that they may believe what is false, in order that all may be, uh, in, in order that all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. They did not believe the truth, and the truth is the word, the Torah. If, if they did not believe the Torah, but they loved and had pleasure in unrighteousness, which is opposite, opposite to the truth, opposite to Torah, it says that Elohim himself sends them a strong delusion, a strong deception to believe that uh, they, they believe, they believe uh, what is false, what is a lie. Now, how, how do you come to terms with that? In the book of Job, he says that with him are strength, with Yahuwah, his strength and sound wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. Now, some translations change this because that sounds like uh, he has the control of everyone and he sends some and I believe it's true. I mean we have in, in First Kings and in Chronicles a situation when uh, Yahuwah himself sends a, a spirit of deception to all the prophets to prophesy falsely to the king to go into war and only one prophet, Micah stands against it and um, I think you should read that story it's, it's a funny story but it's a true and a very we learn we can learn a lot of things from that story uh, only Micah uh, tells the truth only one prophet out of all of them and Micah says this is what Yahuwah has done he said who will go to deceive the king and and, a, and, and um, a spirit came and presented himself to Yahuwah and said, I will deceive him. And, and Yahuwah said, how, do, how are you going to do that? He said, I will be a false, uh, I will be a, de a deceit spirit 
in the mouth of all the prophets. And everyone said, you are the one, go and do it. Wow! And he went. And it's funny enough, Micah says this story and this revelation is openly told to the, to the king and he still doesn't have eyes to see it. He still goes and listens to all the, the other prophets. Why? Because the will of Yahuwah was to be fulfilled. If people are deceived today, don't judge them. Pray for them. If I was deceived, I was deceived. Yahuwah allowed me to be deceived. It was not the time or, I don't know, I can't explain. One thing I know, I can see now, and I can't be proud of it. I cannot take any credit for it. I can only give Him praise and give Him glory for that. And I can pray for my brothers and sisters for, so that they can see themselves. It is the Holy Spirit who can take, uh, take the veil and show people the truth. Pray for them. Don't judge anyone. So today, as, as we have seen these passages and, and the definition and everything, now I would like to uh, uh, take some time and I would like to take you on a journey in scriptures. And um, I, I don't want to talk about all types of deceptions uh, in regard to all the doctrines. I only want to to, um, uh, um, to take you on a journey where we can see what is the deception that will affect your eternity. Because not all the deception, not all the lies will have the same effect on you. Okay? And uh, when I say destiny, I actually uh, refer to the life or death in the age to come. Let me give you some examples. If I was to give you a cup of milk, okay, and I, I tell you this is cow milk, but in reality it is goat, goat milk. How is, I'm, I'm deceiving you, I know that it's not cow milk. I'm giving you uh, goat milk. How is that lie, that deception going to affect you? Not much, okay? Unless you have, you, you have some, uh, some allergies to goat milk, then you know that it can be some some problems there. But and you know, if you have no allergies, you drink, and you, if you, especially if you have never drink cow milk before, you drink it, you don't know, you don't know the difference. You, you know, it's not going to affect you. But if I told you that the law of gravity has absolutely no effect on you, and I tell you, don't believe. Because you are not under the law of gravity anymore. Okay? And you believe me. And you go and you jump from the airplane. Because you think the law of gravity is not going to affect you. You're not under that law anymore. Okay? How is that going to affect you? Okay? Don't even imagine. Don't try. Okay? Okay? If someone tells you don't obey the law of gravity, I would suggest to you, strongly suggest, don't believe that person. Because the law of gravity will stand until Yahuwah will decide that he will make a change in regard to the law of gravity. So, Today I would like to share with you a deception, a lie that has to do with your eternal life, with your salvation, with justification, with righteousness. And I have, uh, I, you know, I, I want to do that because I know how the deception looks like today. I have studied theology. I know what the systematic theology says in regard to salvation, in regard to having eternal life, how you get eternal life. I know <clears throat> what systematic theology tells us about justification, righteousness. And I would like to submit that they tell you half-truth. 
they tell you the truth, this systematic theology tells you a truth that is distorted because although they acknowledge uh, that salvation is by grace through faith, they do not define faith to be faithfulness. They define faith to be believe with your, with your mind that Yahushua, or they call him Jesus, is the son of Elohim, the son of God, and he died on the cross. Absolutely true facts. Absolutely true. And, and he died that you will receive forgiveness, and through his sacrifice, you can have eternal life. I believe there is truth in what they say, but they don't uh, define faith to be faithfulness, which in involves obedience. And because of that, that's the deception. That's where the, the deception lies. Okay? Let me take you straight to where Messiah himself answered the question, what to do to have eternal life? Because uh, when um, a man came to him, and he, this man was sincere, this man did not come to Yahushua to test him. He was sincere, he was genuine, he wanted to have eternal life. And he said, teacher, what good must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, why do you ask me about what is good? There, there is only one good. Now, if you read this in, in, uh, in uh, King James translation, you will find a totally different uh, translation into English. It sounds like, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, why do you call me good? Messiah, oh, this person did not call Messiah good. He said, what good shall I do to inherit life? <laughs> okay? And I would like to suggest to you that the manuscripts that King James Version uses are not the right manuscripts. If you go with the NU manuscripts, if you have a New King James Version, in the New King James Version there is a note down the page and says the NU manuscripts, which are earlier manuscripts, do not have this. And they, they put what is, the, what is in the NU manuscript. And I believe this translation, which I believe it's the International Standard Version, uh, if, if I'm right, it could be International Version Standard, is quite right in this passage, you know, in regard to this passage. And it said, why do you ask me about what is good? There, there is only one good thing, okay? In, Messiah is not referring there's only one good, and in King, King James translation said, God is good, Elohim is good. That's not what this passage is about, okay? So some people uh, took the, you know, their own uh, power and, and our authority to put words there to make the passage you know, look like it's not, okay? Because it only makes sense. This person says, teacher, I want to know what shall I do to, to inherit life, eternal life? And Messiah gives him the answer. So if, if you read the other translation, you, other translation, you will understand it. it doesn't make any sense. He says, if you would enter life, other translation says, if you will to enter life, keep the commandments. Keep the commandments to have eternal life? I mean, go in, into, the ch into churches these days and tell the pastors to preach if people want eternal life, let them keep the commandments. They say, no, no, they have to believe in Yahushua. Well, and then, and then they have to say, okay, why on earth Messiah told this person to keep the commandments in order to have eternal life? Do you know what they will say? They have the answer. Messiah answered him under the old covenant rules. Because Messiah did not die yet. He was not resurrected. Yes! They said, you have the answer. No, you don't. Messiah did not say, until I die, you keep the commandments. Afterwards, you just believe. No. 
That's the deception. Be yes, you believe. It's true, you have to believe. But what is belief? If belief means faithfulness, follow Him and His example of obedience. Yes, that's the faith. That's the faith. That's why the apostles, every time the apostles in the, in the book of Acts, when they were asked, what shall we do? To, uh, what shall we do now? They said, repent and be baptized. In other places, they, they said, believe in Yahushua and you will be saved. Believe in Yahushua means to follow his example of obedience, to be faithful as he was faithful. Because faith or believe means faithfulness, obedience. If you understand the definition of faith, then you cannot go wrong. But if you find, if you make faith to be something else, then you are deceived. Because Messiah gave the answer that is available that is available for all ages. It was available for Moses, it was available for the prophets, it was available for Messiah's time, it was available for apostles, and I promise you it's available for you and me. Hallelujah. Okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 12. This the answer that Messiah gave is in line with the whole scripture. He says uh, in Ecclesiastes 12, Let us hear the conclusion of all matter. Of all matter. I mean, listen to this. The conclusion of whole matter. Whole matter. I mean, imagine. Whole matter. This is the conclusion. Fear Yahuwah and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. You have no other duty. Fear Him and keep His commandments. And if you do that, you have eternal life. If you do that, you are righteous. If you do that, you are justified. Now He will say, Ha! Ah, okay, I caught you. Who can keep the commandments perfectly? <coughs> we'll get there. In James chapter 2, James makes a very important point that faith is not only mental assent. Faith that has no works is a dead faith. Okay? If you only, and, and I want to submit to you what the, the preachers and the, the church leaders these days who have theological training, even doctrine in theology, what they preach if they don't preach the truth, if they don't mean what Messiah meant by uh, keeping the commandments and giving that answer to those who want to have eternal life, if they don't preach that, they preach faith that is dead faith. Because uh, uh, James says, my friends, what good is for one of you to say that you have faith if, you, if you, your actions do not prove it? Can that faith save you? He actually asked a rhetorical question here. Can that faith save you? This is about salvation. It, uh, faith, because uh, uh, salvation is by grace and it's true faith. Okay, the instrument... Uh, by which the grace is given us to, so that we will have eternal life is faith. And if faith is not um, married with deeds, with works, with actions, you have a dead faith. A dead faith would, not, would never allow the grace of Yahuwah to flow into your life and give you eternal life. You have to have the faith that is faithfulness and then by the grace of Yahuwah, through your faithfulness, uh, as a result of that, you will receive eternal life. Hallelujah. He says, can that faith save you? And the obvious answer is no. Suppose that there are brothers uh, and si or sisters who need clothes and don't have enough to eat. What good is there in, in your saying to them, Elohim, bless you, keep warm and eat well, if you don't give them the necessities of life? So it is with faith. If it is alone and includes no actions, then it is dead. But someone will say, one person has faith, another has actions. My answer is, show me 
how anyone can have faith without actions. I will show you my faith by my actions. Do you believe there is uh, there's only one Elohim? Good. He says, good. You believe there's only one, only one Elohim? Good. Yeah. The demons also believe and tremble with fear. Do you want to know, all oh foolish men, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that the faith, that faith was working together with his works and by works faith was made perfect? And the scripture came true that said Abraham believed Elohim and because of his faith or his faithfulness Elohim accepted him as righteous. And so Abraham was called Elohim's friend. You see then that it is by our works that we are righteous or put right with Elohim and not by our faith alone, meaning mental ascent. Mental ascent without works, without obedience to Him, not to man, obedience to Elohim. Faith without obedience is dead faith. It doesn't save. It's about being righteous. It's about being put right with Elohim. You cannot be put right with Elohim if you do not obey Him, His commandments. It's your duty, it's my duty. Because we are human beings, we are men, we are people, and that's our duty. Now, let's go closer to, to what 1 John says in regard to deception this time. I write to you these things about those who are trying to deceive you. So, John says, there are those who want to deceive you. And I'm writing to you because I know there are people. So, obviously, he intentionally wrote to these people to warn them and to tell them, be careful, this is the truth, and not let no one deceive you. Okay? If you know that he, Messiah, is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who practices righteousness has been born of Elohim, of Him. Okay? Anyone who practices, not everyone who believes Yahushua died on the cross with their belief with, with your mind. You can even say it with your mouth. You can believe it in your heart. If you do not obey the commandments, it proves that you actually don't believe. That's right. You have to believe with your mind. You have to believe with your heart. But that's not the end of the story. That's just the beginning of the story. You have to prove your faith in Messiah. If He is the Son of Elohim, if He is the Messiah, then follow Him. Do what He said. Do what He did. Okay, you, you probably remember about the in the in the uh, uh, early 70s or late 70s, uh, it was a, a movement. What would Jesus do? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you know, these days you find uh, yeah, no, these these things. Uh, all you know, the real question is not is not actually what would Jesus do. The real question is. What did Yahushua do? <laughs> what did he do? Because he would do today what he did then. He would obey the commandments. He would obey the Torah of Moses given, to, you know, the command, the, the Torah given through Moses. It's not Moses' law. It's not Moses' Torah. It is it's Yahuwah's Torah given through Moses. And he was faithful to the Father in everything, he did not, he did not break the Torah. So if he didn't, and he is my master, and he is my example, why should I break it? Why? Just because some people say, ah, oh, you don't, you don't actually have to do all the commandments. You only have to believe in Yeshua. Is that enough? reason for me to disobey because someone tells me uh, you know I'm off the hook and I can just chill out relax 
No. no. Let no one deceive you, John says. Why do you think John says this? Because there were people who came to these people, to the believers, John is writing to, and said, look, guys, Messiah died. He fulfilled the law. You don't have to do the righteousness. He did it for you. And guess, the same teaching is today. Yes, it's true. Okay? And John says, God, man, let, let no one deceive you. If, and this is not the only place he's uh, actually uh, writing about this. In chapter 3, verse 7 and 8, he says, Little children, let no man deceive you. You remember uh, I said at the, at the beginning, Messiah said in Matthew 24, Let no man deceive you. John says the same words. Let no man deceive you. He, had, he that does righteousness is righteous. Even as he is righteous, he that commits sin, which means breaks the commandments, or some of the commandments, because it's, it's enough for you to break one of the commandments, every breaking of the commandment is sin. He that commits sin is of the devil. Why? For the devil sins from the beginning. And for this purpose the Son of Elohim was manifested, that he might destroy the work of the yeah. devil. What is the work of the devil? Sin. Breaking the commandments. What is the, the, the work of the Messiah came to, to, to accomplish? To keep, to keep the commandments, to destroy the work of the devil so that people would not sin. People would not break the commandments anymore. I mean, how, sim you know, how much simpler than that? You, you cannot get simpler than that. Okay? So let's see, according to what John, and, and, and how John defines this, what does righteousness mean, or practicing righteousness mean? I suggest to you that he is referring to righteousness and doing righteousness to be walking in obedience, being faithful to Yahuwah's commandments. Because sin is breaking Yahuwah's commandments, it's lawlessness. And he clearly uh, says that in, in chapter 3, verse 4 to 6. Everyone who practices sin, see, uh, uh, in, the, in the previous text he said, those, uh, he who practices righteousness is righteous. In this passage he says, he who practices sin also practices lawlessness. It's, it's the opposite. You can practice righteousness, doing the Torah, obeying the commandments, being faithful to Yahuwah and loving Him with all your heart, or breaking the commandments, which means you practice sin. For sin is lawlessness. And you know that He was revealed, Messiah was revealed, that He might take away our sins. Take away Depart from us the lawlessness. Okay? Empower us to live by the Torah. And this empowers Satan to keep us in lawlessness. That's, that's the meaning. That's the, the, the very purpose of Messiah. Everyone who abides in Him <coughs> does not break the commandments, does not sin. Everyone who sins has not seen him or known him. You cannot say you know Yahuwah if you break his commandments. You cannot say you are born of him if you intentionally break the commandments. Even if you believe you don't break the commandments because some people say, well, you, you not bind by this commandment. <coughs> Like they say, you know, you bind by keeping the Shabbat or eating um, clean, clean food. You know, uh, you're not bound by the dietary law, so you can eat pig. Okay? The fact that they tell you this, they deceive you, they tell you a lie because it's not true that these commandments are not for you and me. They're for all of those who want to be in covenant with Him. If, if I want to be in covenant with Him, all commandments are for me. If I don't want to be in covenant with Him, then I don't have to consider any commandment. 
right? So don't let anyone deceive you that you don't have to practice righteousness or you can practice some righteousness but not all righteousness. Because once you break the commandments, you practice lawlessness and that's a very serious <coughs> matter. Okay? And then in, in 1 John chapter 5 he says, By this we know that we love um, the children of Elohim. Whoever, uh, whenever we love Elohim and keep his commandments. For this is the love of Elohim, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For everything that has been born of Elohim overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Our faith. And I put there in brackets, faithfulness. Because faith is referring to faithfulness. We will overcome the world. The system. The, 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 the worldly system. The sinful system that is, is, um, is oppressing the, the, the population uh, and the human beings right now. We will overcome it by our faithfulness, right? People say, well, but no one can keep the commandments. This is one of the arguments that people will tell you. No one can keep the, 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 the commandments. Uh, but Yahushua, the Messiah. Well, that's not true. They are not telling you the truth. Let us see both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, people who were righteous because they kept the commandments. This is the first passage in Luke chapter 1 verse 6 is about John the Baptist's parents, Zechariah and his wife. And they were both, both of his parents, John the Baptist's parents, uh, they were both righteous before Elohim. This is what the scripture tells, it says. They were righteous, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of Yahuwah blamelessly. Wow! Who said you can't keep the commandments, so don't bother? And that, that's basically what they said. No one can keep the commandments, so forget about it. Yahushua has done it for you. Because that, they, 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 this is what they say, which is a lie. He came, he had to come because no one could keep the commandments. That's not true. They won't keep the commandments. It's not about that Israel couldn't keep the commandments. They won't keep the commandments. They didn't want to keep the commandments. Yahuwah gave the commandments because Yahuwah said you can keep it. It's not burden. It's not burdensome. It is our sinful nature. It is our rebellion against Him that doesn't want to obey Him. And if you live by your flesh, you cannot please Him. That's why in, in, in Hebrews chapter 11 it says, without faith it is impossible to please Him. Without faithfulness, it's impossible to please Him. Without obeying Him, it seems impossible to please Him. Let no one deceive you that you only have to have faith here and you don't have to have obedience. Because that's the deception. Without faithfulness to Him, you cannot please, you cannot please Him. You have to have faithfulness. And uh, everything in, in uh, Hebrews chapter 11, all the saints that were listed there, proved faithfulness. They didn't just, oh, I believe there is an Elohim. Yeah, good on him and good on me. Uh, that's not, you know, Elohim asked them to do something and they did. And because they did, they showed faithfulness. And because of their faithfulness, they were righteous. As simple as that, there's no other way to put it. Okay? So this is one example. Another example in Luke chapter 2, verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Simeon was another righteous man. Uh, yes, he was righteous. Why? Because it was imputed. The righteousness of Messiah was imputed on him? Uh, no! He was righteous because he was faithful and he was devout and, and, and he believed 
in the prophets that said Messiah will come and will deliver Israel and will re, uh, he will regather the, the 12 tribes of Israel in the Holy Land, in the Messianic Kingdom, and establish the Kingdom of Heaven to Earth, and, uh, and Israel will be the light to all the nations. Hallelujah! That is the Gospel of the Kingdom. Simeon believed that, and he was devout, and he obeyed the commandments, he was a righteous person. Even, even before Messiah came. In Matthew 13, uh, it says, For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men desired to see the things you, you see and, and saw them not, and to hear the things which you hear and heard them not. Messiah refers to many prophets and many other righteous people in the past who would have liked to see and to hear what happened during Messiah's time. Yeah. And he calls he called them righteous people. And I I submit to you that the prophets again are considered righteous people because they were faithful. So why on earth people are saying to us, no one can keep the commandment, no one can be righteous, when there's too much proof there were righteous people, people who were devout, people who wanted to be faithful. I'm not saying that well, they were perfect as Messiah was, but they were righteous. That's, you know, Job was a righteous person. Yahuwah himself declares he was a righteous person. Was he perfect? No! no. He knows we are not perfect because He made us and He knows what we are made of. We are made of dust, okay? And He knows we can't be perfect like He is perfect, but He wants to make us perfect. And one day we will be made perfect, but until that we have to prove faithfulness. Because He, it is by grace, but it's through faithfulness. And He wants to see that. And, and I want to tell you and empower you to believe the truth, the scriptures, and do not let yourself, yourself to be disempowered by, by a gospel that tells you, you are so much, you are a sinner, and you can't do anything, Yahuwah is doing anything for you through Yahushua, you just have to believe. That's, in, that's a disempowerment gospel. You know, when, when Yahuwah came to uh, Cain, he said to him, You know, Cain, if you do right, you are, you, if you do the right thing, you, are, you, will, you, you will be accepted. But if you don't do the right thing, if you do the wrong thing, the, the sin is near, you know, is stretching the, to the, uh, at the door. And he said, Do you know what he said? But you should. You should. Rule over. You should rule over it. Wow! Cain had the power to rule over, over sin. Uh, that's the truth. Yahuwah knows that we have the power to rule over sin. Sin should not rule over us. But the gospel that is preached today, the way it is presented, it disempowers people and make people say, Oh, well, I can't. I can't. I'm so weak. Because uh, I'm sinful and everything that I can do, all the best thing I can do is filthy rage. That's not true. If you obey the commandments, that's not filthy rage. Yahuwah, Yahushua, I mean, imagine Yahushua obey the commandments. That was that filthy rage. These people who are righteous and are declared righteous by Yahuwah in the scriptures, they obey the commandments. Was that filthy rage? No. Read in the context. Isaiah is not referring to obeying the commandments of Yahuwah to be filthy rage. It's obeying our own uh, uh, man-made commandments and, and doing our own things, uh, pretending that we obey Him. That's filthy rage. But it can't be filthy rage when you sincerely obey Him with all your heart you love him with all your heart, with all your mind. He, that can't be filthy rage. No way. Don't believe the deception. I, I, mean, I believe that deception myself. I did. And one day I said, it's, wow, how can I reconcile?
reconcile this. Okay? So I said, it has to be a way to reconcile it. There were righteous people. If there were no, no righteous people in the Old Testament, then why so many Psalms are talking about the righteous and the wicked? The righteous and the wicked. The righteous and the wicked. What righteous if there no one is righteous? Hey! If you read in, in, in the context what Paul is saying in Romans chapter 2, where it says all are wicked and all are this and all are this and unrighteous and no one is righteous, he's quoting from another passage in the Old Testament. If you read the passage in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament is actually a comparison between the righteous and the wicked. Hey! You can be righteous if you are faithful to Him. Don't let any man deceive you. Yahuwah gave you grace. If you hear, if you heard His voice, if you believe He is the Creator, the only one Elohim, the Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are His sheep. You heard His voice. Let no one deceive you. Just obey Him as simple like a child. Okay? And let all the theology and the systematic theology disappear and become uh, anathema and believe the truth because the truth will set you free. Okay? In Habakkuk chapter 2, uh, verse 4, I almost lost my voice. Behold, his soul in which li uh, is, is lifted up is not upright in him. But the just, the righteous, shall live by his faith. If you look into the word faith in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, the Hebrew word there is emunah, is it? Yes. The word emunah means faithfulness, steadfastness, fidelity. This is just a few meanings of it. It's also in the Torah read, uh, come across the city. Moses came to build steady. Yeah. Hands are faithful in one hour. Yeah, right. So, so let no one deceive you that faith is not faithfulness. You, you may remember that Paul quotes this in, in the book of Romans. Okay? The righteous will live by his faith. Paul is quoting it from, uh, from Habakkuk. Okay? Paul, it cannot mean. This word faith cannot mean in Romans what it didn't mean in Habakkuk. Hey, it has to mean the same thing. Otherwise, we have a big problem. It's the same meaning, and the meaning is faithfulness. The righteous will live, will have eternal life, and will stand before Yahuwah based, based on his faithfulness. It's true that He gives us the grace, He empowers us. Without His power, without His empowerment, no one can stand before Him. But He empowered you, He gave you grace. Don't let anyone change or distort the grace that Yahuwah gave you. And let no one disempower you by telling you a deception, a truth that is distorted or half true okay but you may say okay but what about Paul because in Romans chapter 3 Paul says uh, by, because by the works of the law none of all flesh will be justified in his sight okay therefore in verse 28 he says therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the works of the law. Wow! What do we do with Paul? Because he appears to clearly say, no works of the law, which means no obedience to the Torah. Really? Is that what he says? Let's see. Because I believe this is where the deception comes from. We have to understand what was the Torah considered in the first century. See, if you don't understand what happened then, you cannot know and uh, you, you cannot know the truth. You have to make, you have to do your homework and, 
and study and see exactly what happened in the first century um, during the time of, of, uh, of the Judaizers and the Pharisees and the circumcision group and all of them who were in the first century. If you don't understand that for uh, uh, that the Torah of Moses in Judaism um, included the tradition of the elders, which was the fence around the written Torah, and that included the tradition of the elders, that was basically the oral Torah, the Talmud and the Mishnah, that includes the Jerusalem Talmud and the Babylonian Talmud and, and, and some other writings. And that in in the in the uh, in that understanding of the oral Torah, there is an expression which refers to the works of the law. See, I want to ask you this question: How many times do you find the expression "works of Torah" in the in the uh, in the um, uh, in the Hebrew Scriptures, uh, Tanakh? No. How many times? No. None. Not even one mention of the works of the Torah, and even not even the expression under Torah, under law. Nowhere in the Tanakh is mentioned once. None. But you find it in the Oral Torah, and uh, uh, in uh, I, I didn't know that until uh, a few weeks ago when I read it into the. Uh, uh, Aramaic English New Testament, but I tell you, the Holy Spirit told me in my heart, I knew when I studied all these passages, and I said to myself, Father, the works of the law cannot refer to obedience to Torah. It can't. Father, help me understand, because otherwise, what Paul is saying contradicts the rest of the scripture. It appears that he contradicts. Deuteronomy, the whole book of Deuteronomy, where Yahuwah says, if, you, if, you, if we carefully obey all these commandments, this will be our righteousness. It will be credited righteousness to us. So how come Paul, who knows the Torah, contradicts the Torah, and he's not a false prophet? I couldn't make sense. But one day, I discovered this, and this is what it says. The terms works of the Torah, or on the Torah, predate Paul by hundreds of hundreds of years. These terms were discovered in the Dead Sea Scrolls, a sectarian manifesto, 4QMMT, 4Q394399, 399, while originally referring to the ultra-religious halakha of the Essenes. The same principles apply to the Pharisees halakha. And the Torah refers to the orthodox traditional interpretation and observance of the Torah. Religious halakha is clearly not what Yahushua or Paul followed in their observance of the Torah. I mean, Paul did follow it before his conversion, but after his conversion, he did not. Okay? And that's why, because he knew that these people, the circumcision group, the Judaizers, the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, they were all going by the tradition of the elders, by the oral Torah, which includes the works of the law. The works of the law has nothing to do with, with the written Torah, the commandments, okay? What we have, have written in the five, book of, five books of Moses. The instructions given in what we call scripture, the five books of the Bible, the first five books, they, they include the commandments, the instructions of Elohim. And this written Torah has nothing to do with the tradition of the elders and the uh, halakha of the Essenes and the Pharisees, and which includes the works of the law. And by the way, the works of the law are considered by them to be extra, because they say, Yahuwah, that did, uh, you know, never asked you to do these things, but if you do it, you can actually boast about it because it's not required. The Torah, the Torah is your duty. That's right. But the works of the law are not your duty, so you can boast. That's why Paul says, not by works, referring to this, so no one can boast. Well, I mean, can you boast if the Torah, obedience to the Torah is your duty? Can you boast about it if it is your duty and you do your duty? You can't. Hey, can you? No. Yeah, you can. If you pay your 
mortgage, you can't boast about you go to the bank and say, oh, I paid your mortgage, give me, make me a statue. Well, you just paid your mortgage, you, it's your duty. But if you do extra, then you can boast. And Paul says, it's not by these works, so no one can boast. It's by faith, and faith is obedience, faithfulness to that. Hey! It, all of a sudden it makes totally different meaning, totally different sense to what we were taught in, in the Reformed Evangelical churches. Okay? So the idiomatic expression works of Torah provides insights to those of the traditional Jewish upbringing. Bottom line, bottom line, works of the law does not refer to obedience to Torah, to the written commandments of, of the Torah. It doesn't. It doesn't put one carried on that. You're right what you said. Yeah. But I think it's not enough. As in? Explain. As in, it's the way in which the Pharisees treat the law, Torah, we're not to do it the same way. But we can come up with our own moral tradition so easily. You're right. It's the way in which the Torah You're right. is treated. Yeah. You're right. There, there, is, there is a way that Yeshua has shown us how to treat the Torah, and that's sure. the way that I'm seeking. Absolutely. Now, I would like to submit to you that the, the Catholic Church have their own tradition of the elders, that their own works of the yes. law, okay? Which had nothing to do with those in Judaism and in the Talmud and Mishnah. They developed their own system, okay? We will come back, we'll come back to it. So, um, the real issue in the first century, we need to understand that the real issue was that the Jewish people were taught to obey their rabbis, which is the rabbinical approach to the oral Torah, which from Messiah's point of view, it led to disobedience to the commandments of Yahuwah. Okay? The tradition of the elders both nullified and broke the commandments of Yahuwah because they were editing, editing to it. And the commandments said, do not add anything, do not take away from the Torah. Okay? And the, the situation, the real situation was that except a very small minority, people did not live by faith, by obedience to the Torah. Except a few examples, and we saw there were a few examples in, in the New Testament, and probably another few people who were not mentioned in, but a, 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 except a small minority of people, people in general who lived in Yehoshua's time, those who obeyed and learned the Torah from the Pharisees, they did not live by the Torah. They lived by the tradition of the others. They lived by the works of the law. And, um, and then we also remember that Peter gives us a warning in regard to the, the, the deception. When he, when he says about Paul, he says, uh, and think of the long suffering of our master as salvation, as our beloved brother Paul also has written to, to you according to the wisdom given to him, as also in all his letters, speaking in them of these things, in which some things hard to be understood, which the, the unlearned and unstable per pervert, as also they do the rest of the scriptures to their own destruction. Peter says, there are people in Peter's time, in Paul's time, who distort and pervert what Paul is saying to make it to be against the law, to promote lawlessness. How do we know that? In the next verse he says, therefore, beloved, knowing beforehand, because I just told you, or I just wrote to you about this, Beware lest being led away by the deception of the lawless, or some translation says by the error of the lawless, but the right word there would be deception. Okay? Error is probably not the right word, but the deception is the right word. The deception of the lawless, uh, uh, being, being led away by the deception of the lawless, you fall from your steadfastness. 
And the word steadfastness there, if we are to translate it in, into Hebrew, would mean faith. Because faith is steadfastness, faithfulness. So Paul, Peter says, guys, be on your guard because these people who uh, distort what Paul wrote make it sound like lawlessness and they, they carry on with lawlessness and if you follow them, you fall from faith. Which means you fall from your faithfulness, which means you fall from obeying the truth, obeying the commandments. How clear it, is that? And that is exactly what is happening these days. And I'm not saying, again, I'm not saying that we judge uh, a judgmental attitude because it was supposed to be like that. It was prophesied to be like that. I mean, if it wasn't like that today, I would be really wondering what's going on. Messiah is a false prophet, eh? He said he will, many will come to deceive many. And where are, where are they? Because I can't see them. Well, we can clearly see them. They, they come and they say, and they're very sincere in what they say because they believe they have the truth. And they are deceived, which means they don't know they don't have the truth. Are you with me? Okay, don't judge them. Pray for them. In conclusion, faith is faithfulness, which includes obedience. Salvation is by grace through faithfulness. Obedience to Yahuwah's commandment is a matter of salvation. Because some people say, well, keeping the Shabbat is, is not a matter of salvation. Really? Really? No, it's not a matter of salvation. That just, yeah, no, just really bad. Yahuwah has done everything on your behalf by sending His Son. Well, he sent his son to be an example for you, so you follow his example of obedience so that you can be saved. Amen. That's gospel. Okay? So, obedience to Yahuwah's commandments is a matter of salvation. Let no one deceive you. And if, I, if you believe this is a deception, what I'm telling you now, then you, of, of course you can, you, you can have the options to believe this is a deception. And I will show, I will explain why I believe this is not deception in, in a minute. Grace is given to us so that we would not sin, so that we would not break the commandments. That's why grace is given to us. And Paul makes a very, very clear statement in Romans chapter 6. Shall we sin so that grace would abound? He says, no way. Okay? And another conclusion, the Reformation doctrine of imputed righteousness, I don't know how many of you know about this doctrine, but if you know, I tell you, I have studied it and I have put it in all the angles, and I studied it from all the possible angles. It is not a biblical doctrine, and it is a distorted truth or partial truth, which is basically a deception according to definition. If it's not full truth, if it's not whole truth, then it's a deception. And the deception becomes, uh, comes from the fact that faith is not defined as faithfulness. It's not defined as faithfulness. Another five minutes probably and we're done. Are you still with me? Do you, can you still follow me? Okay, thank you. Basically, what we have, we have the faith, which is obedience to the Torah, is faithfulness to Yahuwah, and that's the faith of the saints, ever. Because according to Jude chapter, verse 3, Jude verse 3, it says, uh, the faith was delivered once to the saints, once for all. Okay, if the faith was delivered once for all to the saints, it means the same type of faith, uh, Abel had, Abraham, Noah, uh, all the patriarchs, uh, all the prophets, Messiah himself, uh, the disciples, and I have to have the same faith. If, okay, because it was delivered once for all, to all the, all the saints. And that's the righteousness of Elohim. If, if, if I obey him, his commandments, I have his righteousness. 
It's not my righteousness. See, people say, well, if you obey His commandment, that's your righteousness. If, if you trust in the righteousness of Messiah, that's His righteousness. They see how they, they, they put it, well, it's true. I trust His righteousness. That's why I follow His righteousness. Because I can't say I trust the Messiah is the righteous one and I don't follow His righteousness. But that doesn't make any sense. But see, they, they, they say, oh, well, no, if you obey, if you obey it, it's your righteousness. Let him, you, 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 you just trust. Well, I, okay, how can I trust? I have to do something. No, you have, you, if you do, it's your work. And it's not my works. That's why they deceive, because they don't understand works of the law does not refer to the obedience to the Torah. And that's, in order for them to make sense, they have to say faith then is not obedience. Because if obedience is the works of the law, and faith is in opposition to faith, to uh, faith is in opposition with the works of the law, then obedience to the Torah cannot be faith. And that's why in Galatians, Paul actually says, the law is not of faith. Because he's not referring to obedience to the Torah, but he's referring to the pharisaical approach to the Torah that the circumcision group was uh, giving to the Galatians to believe that they had to go back and, and obey these. And Paul says, if you obey these, you fall away from grace, you are alienated from Christ. If you obey this, you can't be alienated from Christ because he obeyed that and he, he, he wasn't alienated from himself. He didn't fall away from grace. Hey, it makes sense. Okay? And the, the closest religions, the closest counterfeits, if you want, the closest deceits who are uh, to the faith are Judaism and Christianity. Oh, uh, because I'm offending someone, but I can't apologize because I believe this is the truth. If, if, if I don't want to say this because I offend someone, either here or online, uh, then I can't stand for the truth. I, you know, I, I'm not dividing the truth faithfully, and I'm called, but as a minister, I'm called to divide the word faithfully, truthfully. And Judaism is a counterfeit, as it stands, because adds to the Torah and has their own traditions and works of the law, and Christianity takes away from the Torah, I mean, you take away the dietary law, the Sabbath, the circumcision, the, the tzitzits, and uh, the feasts, and then you end up with Christianity. <laughs> you, you take these few things from the Torah, from the scriptures, and then you have Christianity. And, and, and if you study what happened in the church history, you realize that those who were anti-Semites took these things away because, and they, they said, this is Jewish. Like circumcision, only Jews are circumcised? Really? I know lots of Arabs are, are circumcised and a lot of Christians who are circumcised, even without believing in circumcision. Circumcision is not Jewish. And by the way, there are prophecies that tell that Yahuwah in the last days will judge those who are circumcised only in the flesh and do not have their heart circumcised. Because, you know, the, Judaism made circumcision to be, the, to, to, to be the entry point into the kingdom. The circumcision was never the entry point in the kingdom. The circumcision of the heart was the entry into the, into the kingdom. Okay? So when you make something that Yahuwah uh, gave you, and you make it to be something else, you make it man-made, then it has no value. Let it be, I mean, Paul says in, in 1 Corinthians 7, 19, circumcision is nothing, that circumcision is nothing, but keeping his commandments, the Yahuwah's commandments is what counts. Well, who gave the commandment for circumcision? Yahuwah. He gave the, second, the, the commandment. So if you obey the commandments of Yahuwah, hey! So obviously in that passage he could not talk about the circumcision as the commandment of Elohim because he says, 
circumcision is nothing, uncircumcision is nothing. If, if he made the commandment of Elohim to be nothing, yes, he is a false prophet. And I tell you, he is not a false prophet because he's not referring to the circumcision as a commandment of Elohim. Because he says, this is nothing but keeping his commandments is everything. And some people say, oh, he says, Circ circumcision is nothing but keeping the Ten Commandments is everything that come. Well, Elohim didn't only give <coughs> Ten Commandments. <coughs> if you want to know, he gave 613 okay. all together, and not all of them are applicable to you, no. and not all of them were applicable to Yahushua. Sorry. It wasn't, because he was not a priest, a Levitical priest. He was not uh, a, a woman. So yes, some commandments were not applicable to him. So let no one deceive you because they, they put all sorts of arguments just to just to throw some sand in your eyes, you know? <coughs> and deceive you. Don't let anyone deceive you. You just answer to, with this. If I obey what Yahushua obeyed, he is my example, he is my law, he, he is my my Master, he is my uh, savior. I, I follow him. I obey only what he obey. That's it. Yeah. I don't follow the Pharisees. I don't follow the Sadducees. I don't follow the circumcision group. I don't follow the uh, the Orthodox Jews. I don't follow the Baptists. I don't follow the Pentecostals. I don't follow the Reformers. I don't follow Luther and Calvin. I don't follow anyone but Messiah, hallelujah. Amen. It's as simple as that. You cannot be wrong, you cannot be deceived if your faith practices and your lifestyle in terms of faith practices looks like Messiah's faith practices, you cannot be deceived. Or you care if Messiah was deceived. But if you accept that he wasn't deceived, that he is the Messiah, and he is the one to follow, you cannot be deceived if you follow his example of obedience. And I tell you, his faith practices were no different from Moses' Moses' practices, the, the, the prophet's practices, and the disciples' practices, the apostles' practices. They all had the same faith. And uh, because of that, if your faith is the same, then you cannot be deceived. That's the reason I believe today I'm not deceived. Otherwise, I could not be sure. The only thing that I'm sure is because I want to align my faith practices with His. Application. Now that I know the truth about salvation and faith, what now? What now? Uh, Messiah said uh, in, in James chapter 1 we saw but be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourself you deceive yourself this time if you heard it and you don't do it so in a sense I am responsible for you if you deceive yourself from now on it's my it's because of me because I told you the truth you, you, you heard it from now on you, have an, you are accountable for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently into his natural face in a mirror, for he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, which is, this is the Torah, the law of liberty, and perseveres being no hearer who forgets but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. Amen. Amen. And Messiah, you remember the, the and I, I will close with this one. Messiah said, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blow and, uh, and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and do, does not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and the beat, and beat against the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it.
prejudice. Amen? Amen? Let me pray. Father, you know the hearts of every one of us here. We come before you with, with humility as we want you to minister to us and we want you to accomplish your plans and purposes in our life. We belong to you. We are so much dependent on you. And we thank you that you have given the grace you have called us you have sent your son. You have given us the example. You have given us everything. Your divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness. And we have that promise and we claim that promise. And we thank you, Father, that everyone who is here right now will receive the conviction from the Holy Spirit to go and do what needs to be done in obedience mm. to you wholeheartedly. <coughs> Because we are to love Yahuwah with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength and all our soul. And have our hearts never be divided in the way we love Him, but love Him wholly, holistically. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will bring conviction and that every one of us will be that light that goes in the world and shines and spreads the gospel of the good news of the kingdom that is coming and uh, uh, shares the message repent for the kingdom is at hand and where repentance means come back to the word come back to the Torah come back to obedience to the righteousness that is in the word Father thank you that you will open the eyes of those who have eyes, eyes to see. And you will hear, you will open the ears of those who have ears to hear. So that they will be saved. So that they will uh, respond to your grace with faithfulness. And, and they will receive what was promised to those who live by the righteousness of Yahuwah. The righteousness of Elohim. Be blessed and be honored and glorified, and make your uh, uh, let your name be honored and glorified and lifted lifted up above every other name. In Yahushua the Messiah, the Messiah's name we pray, and everyone who agrees.